everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, Candy. Hi, Jill. Hi, everyone. Oh, can you hear me? Whoops, got to turn the sound off here. I can. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> got the sound on. Um, we are back for day two of painting this little painting, this lovely little ptarmigan. I've done some work on it. I've finished sort of this area here to where I want it to be. There's a little areas that I still need to brighten, but that will be the very last thing I do when I finish the whole item. And I think we should just uh, get right to it because there's a lot of work to do and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get it all finished in an hour. That's just possibly not. And I've lost my power for this. Okay, there we are. Now we're set up. I uh, I misplaced the connector for, for charger for that little camera. So I guess I won't at the end be able to say goodbye to you because it's not happy about running out of power. Why don't we get right to it. Today's brushes I'm moving into. Um, if you haven't been here before, this is what I'm painting, which is the ptarmigan. This image here is on your, your screen, not on, like I can see it, but it's on your screen. And, uh, oh, thanks Darren for letting me know that. So today's brushes are going to be Robert Simmons Sapphire brushes. Uh, they have, um, they're nice and soft and they're nylon-y and you can use any soft brush for this, but I find it really nice because I can put on just enough paint and move it around. And I will be using both a liner, which is the long one, Sapphire, uh, Robert Simmons Sapphire, and I will still be using my very favorite one, the Princeton Dakota. So these are the three brushes I should be using most of today and without, um, yeah, most of today. So let's get going and see if what we damage we can do on this painting today. Okay, so I, I'm pretty happy with creating these feelings of movement. I, I can see that there still needs to be a little brightness, but that I think right at the end, and I think we'll start up here and we'll work our way down to here and into this area here um, and then we'll come back over here. So let's uh, get going with the darker. I did bring the, the, uh, the blue down. It was a little bit too blue so I brought it down into more of a gray tone, which I think more looks actually more realistic. And so I've put on paint and I've put on a fair amount of paint with this small brush. And now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna soften those edges and I'm going to move that paint around. And you'll see me do this a lot where I just put a little bit of paint and I move it around. That's how you get those details, those little details that you need. Okay. Get some of that light in there. Yeah, when I came back and looked at this painting the next day, I thought, wow, that is really blue. And yes, the image is uh, kind of blue, but it wasn't as blue as I had it. It's one of the big challenges is getting things to be the right value and the right color and so we're going to come up here and this shape is more oh it's coming around more so let's 
pop it out like it's a little piece of popcorn. And then it comes to the darker on the other side as it's, the light is moving away. Now you can see that that's way too dark, but I'm going to use my other brush and I'm going to soften the edges. Just soften it and lighten it up by incorporating both the paints. If I do it soon enough with, ac with acrylic paint, you can do that. Um, if you leave it for any length of time, then it, it's dry and you're you're hooped. That's it. So I just soften the edges. Okay, that's looking way better. Okay, cleaning my brush off, and I'm just making these shapes more accurate. And then I'll come back and do all the finalizing here. And bring some of that dark down here, and I can see that it trails across. It's a little bit too gray, so we'll bring a little bit of that blue back in. Yeah, that's better. Trails down. There's all sorts of highlights in um, in the uh, the snow on the snowbank that we will come back and do right at the end. We'll get those little pieces of details that make it look like actual snow. So how is everyone doing today? Everyone enjoying the uh, warmer weather in Yellowknife? I went out birding this week and, uh, and I got some amazing pictures of a short-eared owl. It's the first time I've seen one in person and so that was totally fun. And that mountain blue bird was so cooperative. It's like, oh yeah. So I saw it twice before it moves on, because it does move on fairly quickly here. They're just passing through, they're not staying. Though the short ear, well, I don't know if the short ear owl stays or passes through, I just know that I saw it. I was thinking next week of painting a great gray owl. So you guys think you'd be interested in that? create this shape here and I can see that background is needing to come in more here find that color since I'm not working from the same palette I've okay no that needs to be darker if you put too much paint on if it's wrong I can just come in with my brush before it dries and soften it and take some water and kind of push it away and remove it so that you're not uh, fighting with it. Okay, that's better. And I'll just move that around so that it gets integrated in. Okay, just gonna soften it. Hey, mom. Hey, <laughs> glad you could join me. That's awesome. I hope you're... Oh, great candy. Well, I actually thought I might do two owls in a row because seeing that short-eared owl um, the other day, I thought, oh, he's got a really interesting face. And there were three great gray owls that, on that night when I was out on, on Sunday night. We saw three great gray owls and we saw um, the short ear, short ear owl and we saw two sandhill cranes flying by. So it was quite an exciting night actually. The migration is just starting to happen, it's finally getting warm enough. The wind is I think from the south which will bring more birds up and we're just waiting now to see I hear that there's some swans at the river, so I have to get out there and check that out. They tend to be so far away that it's really hard to get a good picture of them. I got way better pictures of them up in Anuvik when I was there one year. It's 
So any any time I travel, that's what I do. I go and do birding things. So when I was in Australia, I I did some interesting. Okay, what am I doing here? Where am I at? I seem to have lost myself here. Lost my shapes here. When I'm doing this work, I also think that, you know, the work should be is, you know, horseshoes and hand grenades. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not a a totally perfect painter. I, I get the general idea of it done, and that's what I'm looking for. Because I think perfectionism can just sort of tie you down in ways that you'd rather not be tied down. Okay, right, that I think is a much better shape. And then we'll bring that light down into it a little bit and bring it angled this way here. Thinking about where I want to go with it and bring that little bit of that half tone in there as it turns away from the light but still is letting some light through. Dry my brush off, bring my other brush in and soften these edges just a bit. Okay, let's get this other shape over here. This last shape, the of bumpy snow. Ooh, a little bit of water on my brush. Didn't clean it off enough. Okay. I can see that I've got this shape a little bit too much. I'm going to bring this brush in and I'm going to push the paint back just a around that area. I'm going to bring a little bit of this blue back in to reshape it. Clean off my brush, dry it, and then come back to reshape it and push it out around and make sure that it's in the right that it blended in with what other okay what do we think I'm standing back because I need to see some distance between what I'm working on and and uh, the painting okay so we have one last shape that I need to capture along the top and then we can start to work on finalizing this area. It comes down here, bringing my brush, soften the edge, pull it down. Um, and then there's this shape here. And I'm looking back and forth. My eyes are always flipping back and forth, back and forth, so that I can because your your brain won't remember and one of the things that I know that lots of beginner painters do and I did is get so fixated on what you're painting you forget to look and it's really important to look so I want to look closely at what I'm seeing and and coming back and stepping back helps with that okay I'm gonna come up Going to soften that edge, soften it in. Now I can see that there is some glow in there because the light travels through snow. It's not a hundred percent blocked. So let's add a little bit of that, just a touch lighter. And It doesn't need to be a whole lot lighter to, to look like it's glowing. OK. 
Okay, and I'm a little bit bluer than that. Okay, and it comes up here. And then this is where this brush comes in. The other brush, the hard brush, comes in handy. The Dakota, the Princeton Dakota. Because I can take that little piece of paint and I can move it around and I can soften it out and I can make it look like it's kind of fading away right here. But you have to do that right away with give it that glowing feeling. Okay, we're going to come in here with that as well because this is a we're going to take that brush again and we're going to soften the edges. Now, we know that snow has a lot of different colors in it. So I'm going to add just a touch of sunshiny yellow. Just a hint of that yellow. And I want to add, you can see all of, all of a sudden it seems brighter and happier. And I'm just going to add that much. I'm going to take my Dakota brush, my Princeton Dakota, and soften those edges. Soften, soften, soften. So that it stays bright. Oh, look at that. Now it looks like the sun is shining on it. Okay, so we have some over here as well. And it's in an interesting shape. Here. And then it comes over here. Let's get some more paint. Spritz my paint to keep it fresh. You have to do that regularly with, with acrylic. And we're going to come over here. And this one comes down a little further towards it. Again, using my Princeton Dakota brush. We're going to soften those edges and yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it makes it look like the sun is shining on it. Now I might have to come back and put a little bit more on just after it dries because it is paint after all. We want to make sure that, take my brush, soften that edge, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Okay, now this shape over here is down here. We're going to put that sunshine on there. And it's really interesting how the, the light is capturing, the snow is capturing the sun. It's not just always capturing it in every place. Clean off my brush. Bring in my Princeton Dakota and just touch the edges to soften. For those who have been following me for a while, you've seen some of my paintings are, you know, the, 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 the grackle or the raven that I did this year. This is how I do those little subtle shifts of of colors is by just being patient and being slow and thinking about what I'm doing. Now I'm going to bring this in. Okay. Oh, there. It really does look like the sun has started to shine on it. Spritz again. I'm going to put a little bit more paint on. And now I'm using the Robert Simmons liner because it's more controlled and easier to manage. Okay, there we go. Turn the brush off because I don't want to take and move the paint too far or, yeah, I just want to control it. Okay. And it is very noticeable that that's the light part. And then we have this other part here that is that 
it's turning away from the light. It's still letting some sunshine in. And it's, it's going to sort of melt into that background a little bit. So let's lighten that up just a touch so it doesn't do that. I mean, there are times you want to do that, but this is not one of them. Bring it around. I'm looking back and forth and I'm seeing that, that shift of light just through this area here. I just want to soften that. Okay. And now, since I've got some paint on my brush, why don't I just put that in place here? Because I can see it there. Using my Princeton Dakota brush, I'm going to soften the edges. What I love about, about uh, um, acrylic is it's fast drying and what I don't like about it sometimes is it's fast drying. <laughs> but you know there's ways of getting around and it, it, and it covers over and you can fix up most anything. So we'll just darken that there. And we come in a little further with that. Clean my brush, come back in, and touch the edge. Now it doesn't look like the sun's actually hitting it yet, but we're going to do that next. Put some sunshine on it. Okay, and I can see that the sun is really bright all the way along here. We'll build up the sun and build it in. And soften those edges here with the Dakota. And nice and... Okay. And, and I come back and I do, you saw that I've done several layers because it's really good to do layers. I have to pay attention to the time here. Okay. Okay. Let's put some more sunshine in there. And... I can see that the sun is shining and captured along the edge here as well and down in here a little bit. Take the Dakota and bring it and soften it up. And then I'm going to soften these ones up just a little bit, not too much, just enough to make it look like it's going across the top. If you get the paint too far, I can come in here because this was painted last night and I can move it around and move it to where I want. And these are, are kind of hard edges. They're not soft edges on the outside. You can see that they're quite um, hard. So I'll move that around a little bit more. Get that glow happening. And down here. Okay, what are we seeing here? We still see some more sunshine. And we'll come back and play with this more because I've got other areas that need attention. And you can get sort of fixated on on little areas and, and not move very far if, if you're not careful. So what's the weather like where you are, Candy? Okay, pull that down, soften it out. I didn't get a chance to check the weather for Atacokan, Mum. And Thunder Bay, what's Thunder Bay like, Jill? Okay, so I'm happy with those now, for right now. Let's move down, um, 
Let's put a little bit of that yellow. Let's bring it down in here a little bit. I can see that there's a hint of that yellow here. I don't need a lot. Chilly and rainy. Well, this is a perfect day to watch a live stream then, isn't it, Candy? I just need a little bit of sunshine on that to make it stand out. I think we are to the point where most days hopefully will stay over zero now. Not nights, but days. Ah, there we go. A little bit of sunshine and a little bit of sunshine here. I think that's... Let's keep with this sunshine theme. We're just going to go along the edges of it because I don't want it to be the whole shape is sunny. I just want it to look like, look back and forth at your image to see where you're at so that you're, you're actually doing what you're seeing versus getting lost. Hey, Judy. Oh, I'm so glad that the the that you're able to get out walking and enjoy the the spring weather. Mom, that's great. Okay, so what do we think so far? Is that capturing the sunshine? Does it look like it's not going to look like the image because paint is really rather limited in what it can do. We can create the illusion of of um, of sunshine and the illusion. So that's what I work on is is that. Okay. So let's go down here and I see I need to put a little bit more dark in here. So let's put a little bit more dark. Okay. And a little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to use my liner and I'm going to straight across and shape it. And then there's a, a, a little bit of a break as it comes down and then another larger amount here and I can see that there is some light coming through this area so I'm going to put a little bit more light in there dry my brush off bring in my my Princeton Dakota gently touch the edges Okay, what do I think? I think that's pretty good. I'm going to bring this down just a touch. Just a touch. Okay. And then we have a little bit more dark here on, uh, on the edge of this. So we'll just darken that up so that that track sort of shows up and says, hello, I'm here, I'm a car track. Okay. And this, when you get into the, the details, it's actually hard to talk. I'm concentrating. So if I go silent for too long, nudge me along and say, hello. <laughs> Okay, so I need a little bit of that sunshine on these edges here to sort of build that look of light and a little bit here and yep, spritz my stuff. Oops, I missed the time. I was trying to watch for it, but I get concentrating so bad, so much. Okay. I'm back to videoing. Sorry guys. I, that is one thing I'm going to do when I when I can is get a camera that is doesn't shut off after 29 minutes and 50 
nine seconds like the Canon does. But that's another day, another time. Okay, softening the edges. Softening the edges, giving that sunshine across. It's amazing how much lighter that looks when you add some yellow into the paint, into white paint. White paint is not actually as light as we think it is. Certainly not as light as the print is here. I can't get that light. Okay, let's do in this area here. And then we'll come back and we'll finalize this area. What time do we have here? We have 27 minutes, so we don't have that much time. And you can see how, how little I've gotten done in that time frame that we've had. Um, so let's get going here. Let's, uh, we're going to bring in that dark again to, to get the little tread, the tracks that are here. Um, and we're thinking about the shapes of them. And if they're too dark, that's all right. We'll come back and lighten them. But I just need to get them in place so that it looks right. And I'm coming back and forth and I'm stepping back and I'm looking to see that I've got the angle right. And immediately it's really interesting what I can see. I can see in the, in, the, in the shadow, you can see there's track marks there, but they're lighter because they're capturing the light. So we're just going to continue on building up, building up, building up, looking back to see if that angle is right. If the angle's not right, I can push the paint forward till I get that angle right. And I can see I've got some light areas here that need to be captured. Oh, that dark area needs to be captured first. Let's get that in, in correct. Okay, so we've got this lovely dark area here. So I'm just going to build that up. And it's all the way along. So that's the tread mark. We're going to just give it some love there and okay, so nice and soft and soften it off at the edges there. Okay, pretty good. I mean, probably, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to leave it there. And I can see there's more of a cast shadow here off of this, off of that shape. Now I got too, I went too far onto the shape. I'm going to take my brush, dry it off the, the Dakota one and push that paint off so that it's behind the little pile of snow. Okay, let's get the next lights in. Okay, the next lights start down here. I see that there is a little bit of light there and another one is far more angled or I've got so where is it starting it's starting here there's one there yeah and there's one here and there's another bigger one here and back I'm going to back up and see. I'm seeing that it's moving up here, so it's not moving to that cast shadow is not 100% correct. Uh, yeah, no, I got it too far forward. So if you get it too far forward, erase it, start again. Okay, and then we're going to look at everything and see if I can locate it in the right place. Okay. Get some of that dark into it. 
and I can see that there's little bits of cast shadows coming off of these, the little tread marks. Okay, a little bit more. All this detail work starts to take up, it takes up a lot of time. So I'm just going to come back to that. I will come back and I will finish all of the detail in here and post this when I'm finished painting it. Um, the detail, it's, it's a very methodical, slow process. And I'm thinking about how that is bumpy shaped and there's a shape in here where it's capturing light and down here where it's capturing light. found the cast shadow kind of interesting because it's, um, it's the, uh, the tail on the end is, you can't see the tail, but you certainly can see it in the cast shadow here. But if we're going to bring that down and bring that in here. And cast shadows are never as dark, and I'm going right into the bird because I want to cover that over as we actually think, they're actually much lighter because there's all sorts of light coming. Hi, Margaret. How's it in Southern Ontario? Are you chilly and rainy too? So now I have, right about here, I have a third track that's I'm going to lighten that up a little bit more. Too dark. Spritz. We've got only about 20 minutes left. So it's not, we don't get a lot of time. This painting takes a lot of time to do well. Wet and rainy. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're just happy to be over zero right now. It has been a cold April. Okay, and then we have this other one that's coming up from about here, and we're gonna just traipse it along. These will be refined as I go along into this area. We're just trying to get the information in place. Last week I was asking what flowers were blooming. All that rain will make your flowers happy. Okay, there we go, there we go. We've got some here, okay. I'm gonna bring my Dakota in and just soften those edges. So this is just the beginning of this section but it gets me the information that I, see, if I can see if it's correct. And I can see that this part over here, totally not. So I'm just gonna erase it and come back with my brush, adding a little bit more light paint and then getting that angle to fit in with everything else that we're doing. Lots of lovely spring flowers blooming, ah. So do the cardinals hang around in the spring too at your bird feeder or are they just a winter thing? Margaret? I've got red poles at my feeder still. Uh, just a couple horries and mostly common red poles. I, I was hoping snow buntings would come to my feeder but they've been to other people's feeders but my feeder must not catch their attention which is kind of sad. Okay, let's move down here and put in some information down here because we have some interesting light being captured and shapes in here. So let's start with the light. And we're gonna build up these little, little shards of snow that I think would add a nice little addition to Darken it on the other side. Just 
to create the illusion of, okay, that's too dark. Oh, okay. So they come in the spring. Interesting. Someday I will come to visit and I will uh, come to see them. Okay, and let's build the other one that's right beside it. And it goes in here. It's probably a detail that probably could have waited, but you know, that's it. It's all right. Build that shape. Okay, and darken the other side. And then we have a, the cast shadow off of that so we can see that I've got it. I've got something not going right here. So let's add some light in here and build this up. Oops, a little too light. Too light. And build up this and fill that in so that we get the the, uh, the cast shadow of the bird more accurate. Oh yeah, I know. It is so hard. And Yellowknife has had a, a big out, not a big outbreak, but a start of an outbreak that we, we don't, all the schools are closed and all the kids activities are closed. We haven't had, um, we haven't had much community spread at all through this time because our uh our um oh cammy is doing such a great job i don't even know what her job title is the top doctor who is doing her 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 job and doing a great job of it she's been keeping us really safe and people have been following their their isolation until recently and so we've run into a bit of a hiccup so you know for the first time you guys have been in lockdown lots in Ontario um, we're act we're on the edge of it we haven't been in lockdown since last spring and that wasn't because we had we had much COVID it was just because it was the start of the pandemic okay so now I'm coming in and I'm seeing all of these lovely shapes of light in here I have to pay attention to the time. I've got 15 minutes. I'm going to start, stop this camera and start it again so it, it doesn't run out on me. Okay. Hopefully that worked. And I've got some light here. I'm going to use the Dakota brush to sort of soften those shapes and just give the illusion that they're there and then we'll come back and build on those as we go along. I'm looking forward to being able to go and see our oldest son who lives in Australia and our son and, and daughter-in-law and grandson in Alberta. We haven't seen them. We saw them briefly in December when I was coming through. Um, after being in Ontario with my folks, uh, we saw them briefly then. So it's, we're really missing that boy, I'll tell you. Bring in some of this random shapes. Soften them out with, with my brush. I want to pull some of it back. Okay, now we're starting to, there's lots of shapes in there that still need to be developed, but I've got a, a hint of where I want to go. So I, I most likely will have about five or six more hours of painting time on this, just because it has so much more detail. But instead of doing three weeks in a row of this, we'll just move on to a, another bird next week. And that will be on Thursday, the 14th. Or the third, no, the 13th. 
on, uh, yeah, Thursday the 13th of May. Okay. Now in this area, when we left last time, I had put some of that yellow in to give that glow that I'm seeing, but now I'm seeing some tread marks there too. So I want to get those in. They're not as dark as the tread marks over here are in their shadow because it's in the, oh, that's still a little too dark. Let's go lighter here. Because it's in that glowing area. Yeah, that's better. So let's get that, those, that feeling in it. And it's very randomly shaped. So we wanna make sure we're sort of touching the brush. Oh, that is just way too long, isn't it? La in 2019, we convinced our oldest to come for Christmas from Australia. Boy, we have not regretted that decision anyway. Who knew the pandemic would come and rearrange our lives? Yeah, grand babes. We miss them when we don't get to see them. Okay, I'm going to build the tread that's coming off here at the corner. Nice and rounded. Oh, I see that it has a nice little round shape here that we'll work on in just a minute. And it comes down that light. Okay, bring my Dakota, the Princeton Dakota in to soften this edge here. And I see that it has some real light here. That's even brighter. So let's capture that as bright as we can in paint. We can't just give the illusion of it. Okay. 2018. That's such a long time, Candy. How old is your nie your granddaughter? I mean, I'm so glad right now we have FaceTime and we have all of the tools that we have because my goodness I can't imagine in the 80s if this had happened when we lived in Frobisher Bay and in Akaluit um, which became Akaluit how much more difficult that would have been okay and rounding it out rounding it out so it comes this way and into there Put that over the foot so that, okay, standing back and looking, and then I'm coming forward. How much is time? We have 10 minutes left. Yikes, an hour goes so fast. She's 17. Oh, well, that's really helpful that she's able to communicate more. She's 17. <laughs> we talk regularly to Burke, too. I just sent him rocks to, to paint because... And I got the same kit so that we can spend some time doing painting together in a fun way. Okay. Yes. I'll bring that. We're going to come and work our way. We're still setting up where where we want to go with this. Um, it, you know, it's as I said, I've probably got a lot more hours. Oh, that's great, Mom. I'm glad that you're enjoying the uh, spring. It was lovely last fall, I have to say. I enjoyed walking your trails. Okay, what do you think, guys? Are we coming along here? So we're still just, you can see that we have uh, the, the brown from last week still sneaking through here because I haven't, we haven't gotten to that point where to, to hide it completely. All right, that seems like a, is that a good angle? Um, I want to say that it comes down a little bit more. Okay comes down just a little bit more. I think that's better. Okay. And I'll come in and put the next angle in. 
and then we'll build in between because I can see that we're still seeing okay so this comes in here and it comes up and it comes a little lighter and then here and down okay Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Let's put some of that lighter snow in there. Not really too light, but it's lighter than the... Okay, let's put this in place. Oops, a little bit more glue to that. Okay, there we go. Now we're, now we're cooking. Bring that in. Oh, I'll bring that glow back in here because I can see that it trails off this way. But not I see the painting, but not what I what I am doing. I don't understand. Has something stopped? The video seems to be running. The camera's still running. You can hear me and see the painting, but not what I'm doing. You must have refreshed your page, Candy, and see if that makes a difference. You might have just sort of ran out of band space, space and, and your, and your uh, computer has just sort of said, ah, try that and see what you think. Bring that darkness down. And this is really blue now. You can see compared to everything else, this is such a blue area. I'm going to bring down that blue a bit. Not quite that. Yeah, let's bring that blue down and get it to more manageable. Yeah, that's better. I definitely had it way too blue. Did that work, Candy? Did you, did refreshing it work? This is my second time only, so I don't really know much about what happens on your end. I just kind of trying to keep up with what happens on my end. <laughs> and try to keep up with the comments as they come along. Last week I figured out that, uh, I should do something like make the print larger so that I can see it. That would be helpful. <laughs> That's what I learned. Oh, good. I'm glad it worked, Candy. Okay, what do we think here? We have five minutes left. Um, I'll just do a little bit of the light in here. We'll put some of that light and we'll start to create those shapes. Uh, here we are. We've got this shape here. Let's put a little light here. And there's a little light there. And here's a little light. And we're just going to soften those edges because we don't want them hard. I'm just giving the intention that they're there. It could even be higher angled here. There, that's probably better. And then we have some little dark areas here. Let's get those put in place. Keeping track of the time because I don't want to go over my hour. I mean, everybody's got busy. Well, maybe you don't have busy lives if you're lock in lockdown mode. <laughs> you might be just happy to keep staying here. But um, I think an hour sitting watching somebody paint is probably enough time. I mean, I'm happy to watch somebody do it for three hours. But, you know. I'm a little bit weird too, so that's all right. Somebody says it's like watching paint dry. I said, indeed, it totally is. But it's always interesting, and everybody processes differently and does things differently. Okay. I don't think I have that high enough. I think I'm, I'm putting it all too close together. So I'm going to lift this up and get this shape higher. 
And then I'm going to come in and remove the other paint because I'm not liking where it's at. And just soften that right out. So there it goes. And then we can come in and lighten it with this, that. Okay. Okay. So we're still just putting in place. When I'm down here working normally, I, I listen to movies and I block my time off and I think, oh, okay, I'll work for two hours through this movie. And then I'll work for another two hours through that movie. Especially as I'm getting ready for a show and I'm starting to get really tired because I've been doing it for a long time. And I have to start again in June already to get ready for my show in the fall. Um, and you guys will be coming along with me. So we're going to try something different here because I think this is a good place to end. Um, give me a second to see if I can pull this off. I don't know if I'm skilled enough. I'm going to come in. I'm going to take the manual focus off. I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. So you can see more um, and I'm going to get, oh, I'm going to get that off. Okay. I'm not sure. We'll turn it this way a little bit. We'll back it up a little bit more and there. And I'm not sure it's focusing in on me, but thank you for coming today. I will continue to work on this. The rest of my week has been taken up and I won't be in my studio. So I will work on it on the weekend and I will post it when it's done. It will be for sale on eBay. I haven't figured that out yet, but um, if you want to know about that, go to my website and at the bottom of my homepage at dancingravenstudio.ca, there is a newsletter sign up and I will send an, a little newsletter out to tell you when and give you the link for when the auction is up it'll only be up for three or four days it won't be for very long and we are back next thursday to do a great gray owl face with those magnificent eyes um, and uh, you can if you're on youtube uh, subscribe if you're on facebook like my page and we will see you next week on Thursday, May the 13th. Okay, bye everyone.